This video is on the cardiovascular system and we'll be covering the heart anatomy, the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node and basic heart function. So on the left here we can see the basic anatomy of the heart. The blue represents the deoxygenated right hand side of the heart and the red parts represent the oxygenated left hand side of the heart. We can see here we got the basic heart makeup of the right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle and the right ventricle and in between the atria and the ventricles we can see our valves. Now we know valves stop blood from flowing in the wrong direction um, and on the right hand side we can see we have the atrioventricular or the tricuspid valve as it is often called and the bicuspid valve on the left hand side there. We can see where blood enters and leaves the heart through the superior vena cava on the deoxygenated side and when it leaves the left ventricle out of the aorta to the rest of the body. If we look across to the right hand side we can see a real heart here cut in half but again we can see our key anatomical areas we can see quite clearly here the left atrium the left ventricle down here we can see our bicuspid valves where the blood flows through before it goes into the left ventricle and then some more key areas here such as the septum down the middle of the heart um, and the, we'll speak about how the Purkinje fibres interact with the heart later on in order to cause contraction. Here we're going to talk about how the heart actually contracts so it's quite simple we have an SA node here in the or near to the right atrium the sinoatrial node this is often called the pacemaker of the heart because it is responsible for causing the heart to beat the sinoatrial node sends out two electrical signals one of those signals stimulates the atria on both the left and on the right side so that causes both the left and the right atria to contract and that pushes blood down into the left and the right ventricle at the same time the electrical impulse stimulates these two areas another impulse is sent down to the AV node which is just below it we can see here when that electrical impulse arrives at the AV node, this stimulates the AV node to send out an electrical impulse of its own. The AV node's job is to make the ventricles to contract. So the stimulus gets sent down here through the bundle of his and the septum down the center of the heart. And then it needs to travel up the outer walls of the ventricles to make them contract effectively. The parts which conduct this electrical impulse are called the Purkinje fibres and they help stimulate the outer walls of the ventricles. Always something to remember when blood leaves either the left or the right ventricle it always is leaving the heart either to the rest of the body or to the lungs to become oxygenated. Cardiac impulse keywords. The heart is something we call myogenic which means that it generates its own impulses so the SA node will always continue to fire regardless of whether we are at rest or exercising. In future videos we will look at how different chemical changes and impulses can stimulate increased heart rate. The SA node, the pacemaker of the heart, causes the atria to contract. At the same time as stimulating the atria to contract it will also send an impulse to the AV node. Once the AV node receives an impulse from the SA node it will fire its own impulse down the septum through the bundle of his and along the Purkinje fibres, causing the ventricles to contract and forcing blood 
out of the ventricles either to the rest of the body or to the lungs. Two key words here referring to contraction phases of the heart. So when a certain area of the heart is contracting, we'd refer to that as systole. So if the atria are contracting, we'd call that atrial systole. If the ventricles were contracting, we'd call that ventricular systole. Equally, if we are talking about a relaxation phase of the heart, so for example, if the atria are relaxed, we'd call that atrial diastole. And if the ventricles are in a relaxation phase, we'd call that ventricular diastole. Here we're just looking at the structure of the heart and there's three layers which you need to be aware of. The pericardium, the myocardium and the endocardium. So if we look over to the diagram on the right, we can see where the pericardium is labelled and that is the outermost part of the heart, this white bit here. We can also see a small gap between the pericardium and the next layer. The reason for that is because the pericardium is double layered and has some fluid in between it and that prevents friction from the heart banging against other organs within the body and makes the beating process nice and smooth. The myocardium is the second layer so that is our muscular layer as we can see here it's very red just like any other muscle and this is the layer which gets stimulated when the heart beats so from these electrical impulses this is the layer which causes the contraction and it follows something called the all or none law which simply means that if the muscle is stimulated it will fully contract if it's not sufficiently stimulated none of it will contract Finally, we've got the endocardium. So this is a glistening membrane right on the inside of the heart here. And its role is to prevent friction between the heart and the flowing blood so that the blood can flow nice and smoothly through the heart, through the atria, through the ventricles and to the rest of the body.